Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Today we're talking bird photography and I'm gonna count down my top three favorite locations for bird photography that you might not know about. Play the intro. Okay, so let's get into our first location for bird photography. And this particular country is Cuba. Now, when I say Cuba, you're probably thinking about images like this. Or this. And you'd be right. Cuba is an amazing travel photography destination, but it's also worth getting out of Havana and getting off the beach and going and doing some bird photography because the number of species in Cuba is amazing. So there are two particular places in Cuba that I visited that I think are worth pointing out to you. The first one is down on the south coast on the Caribbean facing coast of Cuba. And it's a place called Las Salinas. Las Salinas is just down by the Bay of Pigs, nestled in between uh, Playa Larga and the Cienaga de Zapata National Park. Las Salinas is a shallow lagoon area, um, brackish water, ideal for wading birds and raptors. I can remember one particular day at Las Salinas when I was just overwhelmed by the amount of birds there were to photograph. We had osprey fishing, we had endemic Cuban blackhawk perched up in a tree, we had groups of flamingos and heron, and I remember turning to my wife and saying to her, I simply don't know where to point the camera, there's just so much going on. So Las Salinas is an amazing area. You do have to have a guide to go into that area, it's not an area you can self-drive into, um, but if you go to Playa Larga, uh, there are guides in the town uh, who you can hire to take you out on day trips uh, to Las Salinas and photograph all the birds there. So that's really worth doing if you're visiting uh, the Bay of Pigs area. So on the other side of Cuba, on the North Atlantic facing coast, there are lots of keys, small islands offshore. And the ones that I visited uh, were a set which comprise uh, Cayo Las Brujas, Cayo Ensenarcos and Cayo Santa Maria. That area was quite badly hit by a hurricane last year, so I hope the wildlife and the environments haven't been too badly affected by that. But certainly when I visited in 2011, it was an amazing area, large areas of mangrove, which supported wading birds, raptors, and it was the place that I managed to find one of the key species that I'd been to Cuba to find, which was the Cuban green woodpecker, another endemic species. And Cuba's got loads of those, loads of birds that you just won't find anywhere else. So if you're looking at Cuba just as a regular holiday destination and you're a nature lover, don't forget to tack on some visits to some of these other areas. Okay, so moving on. My second destination for bird photography is Namibia. Now, when we think of Namibia, we think of amazing desert landscapes. We think of Itosha National Park. We think giraffe, elephant, lion, and all those things are there. But when I went to Namibia last year, when I came back, what I realized was that I'd taken hundreds of bird photographs, far more than I thought. So again, let me point out two key areas in Namibia that you should visit for bird photography. The first is Itosha National Park, but one particular part of it. It's called Fisher's Pan. Fisher's Pan is on the eastern side of Itosha. And when I went out there one morning, um, I was amazed at the number of bird species that I found. Lots and lots of birds of prey. So I saw everything from kestrel species to Montague's harrier. And the other thing that's very cool about Itosha is that it's not all small birds. It's difficult because you can't get out of the car in Itosha, so you're restricted. You can't necessarily get as close up to birds as you might elsewhere. But often you don't have to because the birds in Itosha, a lot of them are huge. You've got ostrich, you've got cory bustard, you've got secretary birds, you've got different types of vultures and eagles, everything that you could want. But a lot of it is the big heavyweights of the bird world. So then if you're traveling around Namibia, road tripping as most people do, move on from Itosha and head for the coast because the other area that's amazing for bird photography is the area on the coast around Swakopmund and Walvis Bay. The two types of birds you're going to see most around Swakopmund and Walvis Bay are flamingos and pelicans. The flamingos there are seasonal. 
But if you go at the right time of year, you'll find huge groups of flamingos right in front of the main promenade in Walvis Bay, right by the car park. It's the easiest bird photography you will ever do. The other thing that you can do from Walvis Bay is go out on a boat tour. And Walvis Bay itself uh, is amazing. The boat trips there are an absolute wildlife feast. Not only will you see bottlenose dolphin and you will see fur seals, but you will see huge groups of birds. So I managed to photograph uh, some terns while I was there, lots of gulls, um, and it's a great place for uh, getting flight shots. And the wildlife is quite adjusted to uh, these boats going out. Pelicans will fly alongside the boat at a perfect height, nice and steady. So if you want to get flight shots, you want to get water landing shots, uh, those boat tours are really, really worthwhile. I went out with a company called Levo Tours, who are one of the most established operators in the area, and they were great. Their skippers are really, really good, um, and they're very photographer friendly. So that brings us on to our third and final bird photography destination. And this place is a little bit more synonymous with bird photography, but I still think people don't realize just how amazing it is. Because as far as I'm concerned, there is nowhere else on the planet that is as amazing for bird photography as this. And that's the Gambia in West Africa. So the Gambia is a tiny country built around the Gambia River, surrounded by its much bigger neighbor, Senegal. And it's a beautiful place to visit. It's very easy to plan a visit to the Gambia. There's a rainy season through the Northern Hemisphere summer. And then around about December, the rain stops and it doesn't rain again for six months. Now, what I would say about the Gambia is it's worth planning your visit at the right time of year because just during the rainy season and just after the rains have ended, the vegetation is very, very lush and it's much harder to see birds in, th in that vegetation. So ideally, I would say February onwards was probably the perfect time to go uh, to the Gambia when the vegetation's not quite so green uh, and you'll see a little bit more. Now, one particular family of birds that the Gambia is amazing for are kingfishers. I saw kingfisher species all over the Gambia, and in fact, I'm not even sure how many species I saw. One of them is a very special memory indeed. The first time I saw this particular bird was at the Abuko Reserve, and it was the giant kingfisher. And I remember seeing this bird and thinking, that can't be a kingfisher, it's enormous. It's the size of a small heron. How the hell is that a kingfisher? You have to see them to believe them. It's very hard to get the scale of those birds across in a photograph, but they are absolutely amazing. So what you'll find is it's not just the nature reserves that are the places where you'll see the birds in the Gambia. They are everywhere. There are small pockets of woodland. There are bits of farmland. There are uh, areas that you can access more easily around the mangrove areas along the Gambia River. There are places on the Atlantic facing coast uh, that you'll be able to see birds. But like anywhere, you've got to know where to look. And one of the things I would say about the Gambia is that the quality of bird guiding is superb there. Quite a number of local people have specialised as bird guides and make a good career out of it. When I visited, which was a few years ago now, there was a superb local guide called Karamba Toure. His nickname is Dr. Owl. So that tells you what his speciality is. And if you can find him, he's a superb bird guide. And I know that the training that all of those guys go through is years in the making. They really are some of the most knowledgeable wildlife guides anywhere in the world. So if you have any interest in nature photography, do check out the Gambia. It is an amazing location. It's a great holiday destination. There's a lot of photographers that I talk to and mention the Gambia and they say, oh no, I've never been, I've heard it's good. So if there's one place that I'd say, put on your bird photography bucket list, it has to be the Gambia. So that was my quick countdown of my top three favorite unusual bird photography destinations. I hope that was useful and it's given you some inspiration to add to your photography bucket list. As always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as yet, please do so, hit that button. There's loads more interesting content to come. So let me know what your favorite bird photography destinations are too. If you've got any that I've missed out that you think I should have made this top three, stick them down below in the comments. I'd love to get involved in that discussion. Anyway, that's all for now. I'm off to do some more photography. So until next time, Take care, go safe.